Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. And today, maybe a little bit different. Um, I'm sitting here in, I guess we call this a studio. Sure. Podcast studio with Matt Mastriani. And I have a bit of a confession to make oh boy. Um, to all of you, not just to Matt, but I know everybody is listening as well. And so I just want to start off a bit with this uh, confession to you all. I, I am concerned, and I uh, maybe let it affect me too much. Hmm. I'm concerned in what other people think about me. Okay. All right. That... You know, when we think of confessions or sins, we might not think of that. Right. Um, and this just came to me as I've been, like I was mowing the grass the other day, uh, listening to a podcast. I was uh, just doing some different things in the yard, and um, this theme kind of kept hitting me, knew, knowing we would be here uh, sitting on the podcast again. And I thought, how much time do I spend concerned about what others are thinking of me? And you start to realize how many areas of of your life are are different because uh, it's not not what you want in life. It's not maybe what God wants for you in life, but because you're thinking about well, what are they going to say about me, or what am, what a, how would I respond if they respond this way? I'm I'm seemingly in some ways chasing after that uh, that approval the approval yeah um and so i just again come to this podcast saying man i, I need to confess that a little bit uh to you all and just be be vulnerable that i that i can be overly um worried about what others think of me and that becomes a dangerous situation as a minister yeah, um, I can see that. you know and i don't i don't want it to be and I, I think it's something that i've been aware of before in my past and if um maybe talk to others about it and saw God's wisdom with it. But um, here's someone, myself, that stands in front of hundreds of people every week and tries to look the best. I mean, right? We're doing it for God. Mm-hmm. And so look the best, sound the best, uh, or, organize the best, be on time, all that stuff for so many different people. It can be a really dangerous combination. Uh, it can be a dangerous line of work for someone that is a people pleaser Mm -hmm. and wants others to see them uh, in the best way. And so I kind of come bringing that to you all today to ask you to think about that as well and how you've approached that in your life. Maybe you haven't thought about it at all and you start, start realizing how many things you do in life based on again, what other people think of you or how they might react or uh, to get that person to see you a certain way so that they will fill in the blank. Right. Accept you, promote you, uh, raise you above others, um, think you're the, you're the Messiah, you know, because, because you've, you've gone beyond their wildest expectations that you showed up when no one else would. And we like, to feel that praise, right? When that's like on us and we we do perform, we do show up, we do succeed in that way. It feels good mm-hmm. and we want to feel good. Um, but as Christians, is that what we're seeking? Is that what we're to chase after? Uh, I, I don't think it is. I think for some people um, that are not like myself, maybe you're listening, you're going, I, I don't know if that's part of my life. You know, some people are like, I don't really care what they think. You do. Mm-hmm. Everybody does to some degree. If you don't, you're a sociopath. I mean, like, you you care what other people think. That's why you take showers in the morning because you don't want to smell because you want to like look half decent. So you might say you don't really care what people think, but you, you do. Or maybe maybe you have a select few people that you you know you care what they think, and maybe maybe it's true that you know the for the vast majority of people out there, you don't you don't care what they think because you just don't know them. Mm-hmm. Um, but for, I would say that the majority of people, we do have a deep seated, 
um, fear of letting people down, concern of letting people down, worry, uh, whatever word you want to put in there, of, of having people see us a certain way. And so we do a lot to present ourselves. And what happens, I think, is we, we start to create this fake self um, because I need, because Matt, you're sitting right next to me, I'll, I'll use you as an example. I need Matt to see me as someone that, um, you know, as a, as a great new idea. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a lot of time thinking about a new creative idea for X, Y, Z when that's not what I should be doing. Mm-hmm. Or th- that's maybe not even what you're expecting, but, but what I think you're expecting is that. And so I'm going to do that. Um, and, w- and I create this fa- fake self of, look at me, I'm, I'm, I have all these great ideas, or I'm this, this person that's willing to change, or I'm this person that's willing to go with the flow, whatever it might be based on what I think you want of me. Right. I was going to say, that's the one thing that you have to be careful with because that's just one person mm-hmm. based on what you think you know, I would want from you. But what happens when the next person comes along and yeah. wants something completely different than that person? Yeah, so I have my fake self for that person too. Right. Yeah. I have my fake self at, at, at church, my workplace. I have my fake self when I go home and I'm in front of my kids because they have an expectation and fake self in front of different people and it's it's um it's exhausting i yeah it's it's not what god created me for right. it's not what god created in me um not only do we create this fake self but we we're creating a fake self that isn't representative of our heart mm-hmm. and i think scripturally that's what matters right like our our heart that's what God is changing from the inside out, and it's from the inside that these these things are really going to flow. And so, all you see is is something that you don't really know. Mm-hmm. Like if if all Matt sees is this fake self, then you don't even know. And I'm I'm creating more of that for for me, which you don't even know, or I'm creating more of that, and you don't know the struggle, or you don't know all this stuff behind it because I'm not willing to be open and honest with you, because if I am, then you'll judge me or you'll condemn, like all these, these, these fears that I have that may not even be legitimate fears. Mm -hmm. And so now we're both being fake and, and it's just this, this vicious cycle. And so, um, you know, for us to understand, we have an audience of one Mm -hmm. and it's kind of been a phrase I've heard a lot. Um, and that's, that's not the person around us. It's, it's God. And God knows us and knows our heart. He's the only one that does. Um, and so, as I was thinking, like, what is what is the worst conclusion about tearing down that fake self? So, if I said, okay, I'm not going to be concerned about what Matt thinks about me anymore. I'm just going to be real, real around him. Um, like, what's the worst thing he could do? Well, he could judge me based on something he doesn't even know, right? So you could say, well, you know, Jeff looks like a slob today. Like if, if like if I dress to impress Matt or something, I don't know, I'm just thinking of that as an example. What's the worst thing? Well, the worst thing is he could, he could make a correct judgment on that because le- legitimately I could have, like if I, if I was like, well, I don't care what anybody thinks of me anymore, I'm just going to go in dressed like a slob, not comb my hair, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, your correct judgment is... I look like like what happened? You just you know rolled out of bed and you came mm-hmm. came to work today. You're making a correct judgment, but even in that correct judgment, that's just a correct judgment on something that isn't the most important thing. It, does it have some importance? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Like how you present yourself to others, mm-hmm. and sure, so, some somewhere somehow it does. but not to who I really am or my character. Um, and that's, that's what I want you to know me for mm-hmm. is who I am as a person, right? Like, like our most intimate relationships happen and, and are based on like how we get to truly know that person. Right. And those are like, you know, maybe we have three or four friends like that in the entire world where you're like, I know that person is a person of integrity mm-hmm. I know their heart. I know what they're thinking before they even tell me because I know who they are. I would never get to that 
point with a single person if I'm not willing to be open and honest with what's really in my heart. And you start tearing down that 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 fake self. Um, and I thought about how King David was chosen. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Like uh, First Samuel. Go back to First Samuel. Um, they're looking for a new king because Saul's just not cutting it anymore. And Samuel is, is chosen as a prophet of God to appoint the next king, and it has this this understanding from God who it's going to be, and goes to David's father. I forget his name. And um, goes to who would most likely be chosen as the next king, which would be the oldest son, uh, just because that's how it was back then. And um, so this First Corinthians chapter, uh, not First Corinthians, First Samuel <laughs> chapter uh, sixteen. Uh, so Jesse, sorry, Jesse's dad. Um, or Je- Jesse called Abendate in Ab. Ab- <laughs> See, you guys are, are judging me on my I, pronunciation of words, but that's just my fake self. I'm I'm tr- showing you this, who I truly yes. am now. I struggle with these. Share, Jeff, share. Uh, but Samuel's like, no, it's not the oldest. Um, then he had his next oldest son. No, it's not all that, all that. Uh, he's like, well, don't you still have the youngest son? He's like, yeah, but he's out tending sheep. Mm-hmm. Um, that would not be who he would, we would think God would choose. Um but said Samuel said, send for him. And once he did, um, Samuel took the, the oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David uh, because David was going to be the next king. And the verse, the verse I want to read uh, is verse 7 a little bit before that. It says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so as I was thinking about this topic, that came to mind just because this passage isn't a condemnation of looking at the, at the outward appearances. Often mm-hmm. that's the only indication we have to go on. Right. Especially when someone does have that fake self that they've been so trained to to exude to others and, and to put out there. Um, you know, how else do I have to get to know you other than what you tell me? Mm-hmm. And if all you tell me is fake stuff, then that's all I'm going to ever know about you. But God is different. God can look to the heart and he saw David's heart and he knew he was a man after God's own heart, which would be told about David later. And so, so that, again, it's just kind of the rumblings of, my heart recently and just some of the things that have been going on in my mind as far as, you know, how we, how we present ourselves to others and having a, I I guess it it becomes a balance, Mm -hmm. um, that we, we are concerned. Okay. So maybe this is the way you could say it. We're concerned about how others think of us, but we're not controlled by it. That's a good way to put it for sure. And obviously, we're talking a lot more than just appearance, right, but like right. the way um, the way I act and need to present myself a certain way, or the way I mean, you can talk about the language you use towards others. Um, you know, how many times I've heard like people that, after saying a, a, a curse word or something around me, they're like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I know, <laughs> I know, you're a minister." Well, like, it doesn't affect me. I mean, it's it's more between you and God, but mm-hmm. um, or you and even yourself. They're willing to to pause that kind of language around me, but not around others. Why? Because they want to present a certain way they conduct themselves around me than around others. Mm-hmm. So, so they're controlling their fake self when they're around me, but but be more honest with others, I guess. So it just, I mean, it goes to our hearts and we we realize just how controlled we we become by those things. Um and so to be concerned, I don't think is a bad thing because, I mean, a few weeks ago, we talked about God creating us for community. There there actually, there are some advantages to being concerned about or, or to go in someone and saying, hey, is there something in my life that is deficient? Mm-hmm. Like I've used the word uh, blind spot before. There can be blind spots, but like, am I coming off harshly towards people? Am I... 
Am I doing this in certain ways that that I should stop? You know, there's certain things. I think pride is a big one. Pride oftentimes, because of the character that pride is, it doesn't allow us to see it in ourselves. Yes. And so we do need to be open when somebody's like, hey, um, you need to tone it down a little bit. You're, you're coming off as a jerk because maybe it's a pride issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and someone is, that that's really hard to say to a friend, but maybe somebody's doing it. Like, well, I don't care what you think about me. You should have some concern, right? That maybe that's a legitimate blind spot, especially if you trust that friend mm-hmm. to be concerned to go, okay, maybe they're revealing something to me that I've never seen. Um, but not be controlled by it, especially if it's if it's um, someone in the crowd of people, you know, like they're not a real close friend, maybe someone, you know, like, I, I mean, that's, that's great. They saw that, but they don't have the full understanding, the full picture. Mm-hmm. Um, and f- like going back maybe to the dressing up for communion when you give your communion meditation, th- maybe there's something to it. Maybe like, oh, I, c- I should dress up a little mm-hmm. bit nicer. Maybe, maybe I've let, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but to not be controlled, not like, cause then you're just doing it for that person and you're, it's just a performance. Right. And going back again, being in a ministry, I never want it to be about a performance, mm-hmm. um, and so I, I quick just jotted down a few things like, okay, so what do we do if we found ourselves in this habit of, of presenting ourselves in a fake way? Um, again, to care but not be controlled. Um, to realize the more deeply you are connected to God and His love for you, the less and less connected you'll be to the approval of others. Mm. And you can f- start to fully live out your unique self and the way that God has created you. Because I think a lot of times we are so concerned about what others are thinking about us because it means love and acceptance. And I, I desire that love and acceptance from them because I don't feel like I'm getting it from God. Mm-hmm. And when we start understanding the depth and width and height and length of God's love for me, not that I don't still want love from others, but I I'm, I don't have to chase it mm-hmm. as exhausting as it was before to chase it. I'm willing to just rest in the love of God because I don't have to chase the love of God. Right, and you don't have to make yourself be multiple fake people yeah. based on your audience. If it's true that yeah. God knows my heart mm-hmm. and He still sent Jesus for me, mm-hmm. knowing my heart fully more than I even I even know it, that I could just sit there. Like I, the ladies um, here at NCC just came back from a retreat and the, the, the theme was washed and just like, I, I'm just washed of my insecurities and my fear and my sense of need to control everything so that people do see that fake self. Like I can just be washed of all that junk and filth mm-hmm. and just sit under the presence of Jesus, knowing his love and acceptance for me. And, but that takes time. Um, it it's not going to be like, okay, yeah, tomorrow it'll be better and I'll get over everything. Um, yeah, you look at the the love and the acceptance from him. You look at being able to rely on him for mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. as well, not got, get caught up in the worldly definition of you know stuff and mm-hmm. having like, I need to do this so that I yeah. have the security and everything mm-hmm. like God has you. Yeah. It may not look as pretty as you may think it should look, or it may Mm -hmm. not be as comfortable as you think it should look, but he has you and he will take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. That's saying like keeping up with the Joneses, right? You're like, I got to present this fake self. So I look as successful as Mm -hmm. them. Um, You know, what, what does God say about that? Mm -hmm. Is is God a a presence in that at all? Um, Another thing that I would encourage you is to confess to those around you. Uh, and that's kind of why I started this podcast off the way I did. Just, I mean, legitimately, it is a confession of my heart. Who do you have in your life that you can confess that to? Um, is there there's someone that's a real friend to you that uh, you know will hold it in confidence that you can go to confess and say, "Look, I've I've been fake to my own spouse because I feel like I've been having to perform for them, and you know, just I'm fake to people at work, and so I just need to be." more of who I am and I was scared to be who I am because I didn't think they would like me and legitimately they might not like me, but you know what? 
I've been realizing God is enough and I don't need more of this fake self in my life. And so I'm just going to hold on to the, to the real me and the real God that loves that. And, um, I mean, confessing that, um, can be free, freeing. Yeah. And, um, you can, you can start tearing down those walls, even with those friends and say, look, I know I, I acted like I had it all together and I don't, and I just need help. And you, you said you would help me. And so now here's the time when I'm coming back to ask for that help because, you know, I, I, I felt like I couldn't cry on your shoulder. I had to be, um, you know, the rock in this relationship and I'm just not, and, and God is that, and we need to go to God. And so that can all be the, the healthiest things that come out of confession. Another thing I thought about was staying in the word. Um, obviously God's word has so much to say about who you truly are. Mm-hmm. Um, you are his daughter. You are his son. You are holy. Like you, like Matt, you and I have already been deemed holy. Right. And, and there's no performance we need to do. Like God has, mm-hmm. God has already called us that through his son and because of what Jesus did for us, that you and I are holy, like just sitting in this room together. Um, do you find, do you find it hard uh, to wrap your head around that? Yeah, because every, every, everything else in this life is about me achieving a status Mm -hmm. and and like these identities and especially like holy is this huge identity and it's just been placed on me and I don't feel like I measure up in any aspect of that. So it's just, it, it, it's hard. And again, it takes time. Yeah. And I, I find it hard the older I get in the mm. more kind of in tune and in touch with God that I get. I think we talked about this several podcasts ago. Like the ceiling is always moving as you continue to grow mm. and learn. Yeah. You just feel yeah. further away at times, but you're getting closer. But yeah, because you're, you're coming to a, a better understanding and fullness of his grace and everything and you're just why why right why me like right. why are you doing this for the type of person yeah. i am so and that's why you need to stay in the word more and more because you're gonna have those self-doubts mm-hmm. you're gonna see more of the world and what the world is saying about you and the more you live in the world the more like the longer you live in the world the longer you live in the world the the longer you have these other voices telling you, well, you need to be perfect in this way. You need to work harder. You need to earn what you get. You, like all mm-hmm. these things that are telling you that. And so the more you're hearing that, the more you hear, need to drown those out with God's word and be like, but, but I'm already a son, right. but I've already been made holy, mm-hmm. but I'm already loved. I have all these identities that God is speaking to my life too. Um, and so, something I heard recently too that was interesting that I'd bring into this conversation. Sometimes those moments come when you're all by yourself. Mm-hmm. And even this podcast was birthed out of me just being all by myself. I was out of the office for the day doing different things and just listening to some some faith-based things, even a song I remember. Um, think of, of the call of Moses. Moses was all by himself when he saw the burning bush. Um, there's like there's there's these powerful moments in scripture when they're all by themselves. I mean, like you're David. I, David eventually was with his brothers and stuff, but like he was out in the the field uh, with his sheep when Solomon came knocking to anoint him as the next king, and he wouldn't be until years and years later. But so for you to, I mean, sometimes it can be healthy just to be by yourself mm-hmm. with your thoughts and asking God to speak to you. That's a big thing that we don't do in today's mm-hmm. day and age. Um, we're always walking around listening to something, mm-hmm. uh, ear, earbud in, yeah. you know, we, we need to have constant music and everything. And I was just watching <laughs> kind of going along with that. That's funny, but I was, I was listening to a podcast about such things mm-hmm. about like the importance of our brains and everything. We weren't made to be stimulated all the time by mm-hmm. something like we do need that break. Yeah. And is something as simple as when you're driving, go mm-hmm. 10 minutes without the radio. Yeah. Just be aware. Like, well, you and I are old enough to remember sitting at a waiting room without a cell phone. Yes. And like just people watching. And I think that can be uh, decompressing for our mind mm-hmm. and just like, hey, these moments, these five-minute, 10-minute moments. So I'll stop talking about how old we are. Um, 
I'll leave you with uh, one last verse, Ephesians chapter 4, and this comes from the perspective of not only is this something we need to think about for our own selves, but this is something that we need uh, to help others with. Mm -hmm. Like when, when, uh, when we're complimenting others to not only think about the outward appearances, but to, to start thinking about giving them the, the identity that God has already given them. Uh, Ephesians 4, uh, verse 29 says, Do not any, let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Um, people are a lot more likely to hold on to negative comments than positive comments, right? Yes. Uh, you can be told nine times a positive comment, but then once the negative, and you hold on to that negative a lot more than the positive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of studies then done, and this is true. Like for those that are married, this is super important for you know uh, when you have a criticism and you're bringing that, and if you're continually criticizing one another, you're just tearing each other down. And um, I think like it it takes like eight positive comments to to outdo the one negative comment that you might have. Um, and so in our uh, interactions with others, as you're thinking, man, if, if I need this for my life, this positivity, this truth about who I am, I need to give that to others, right? And this says, according to their needs. Well, if I know Matt, because I know him and I know his real self, um, needs some encouragement today, man, I might just text him a message. Hey, um, as you're going about your day, just remember this is what God thinks of you. And I might, you know, send a, some, a, a verse from the Psalms or something encouraging. Um, if I'm in a situation where we're making fun of somebody and we're laughing at somebody that's not in the room, you know, I might stop that and be like, Hey, look, this needs to be our outlook. We can't have any unwholesome talk. This isn't just bad words. It's not just, um, you know, four letter words or, or, or inappropriate jokes. This is like, unwholesome talk. This is like stuff that's just not helpful for people. Like it's not unhelp un it's not helpful for, for us to tear down people in certain ways. And so to use encouraging words and to think about that as we're going throughout our day. So yeah, there's something, you know, like I, maybe just bringing it back to me for, for a minute as like I told you for a minister, this can be hard because, um, like I'll give you an example of this. Um, for those that attend here at Norman Christian Church, you know, almost every single Sunday after I'm done preaching, I go out to the lobby and I go out to the front door to to greet those that are leaving. I do not do it for an opportunity for you to compliment me one more time before leaving. Right? Now Get that, now that I've, boy. <laughs> now that I've yeah, yeah. Now that I've admitted that I I um, you know, have a hard time thinking about what others think about me. That I that I take that maybe more serious than I ought to. Now you're like, oh man, when I talk to Jeff, I need to be like complimenting him all the time. So you, no, 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 this, this is not what I'm getting at in this podcast. That is not what I'm getting at when I'm at the front door of the church building and you're leaving. I do that so I can have one more opportunity to greet everybody that came into our church. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want to say hi. If I didn't say hi to you, say bye to you. Um, I'm not fishing for compliments at the front door. I think about it as like a receiving line at a wedding, like, okay, right? Yeah, like yep. they have these, not so you, I mean, you probably do compliment the bride and the groom, but they want to be there for everybody that was there for them, right? So you go down the line, so you make sure you get every single person. I would love if I got to say hi and bye to every single person that came to our church building. But that's part of what I do. Like, hey, last thing you're doing, I want to say bye to you as you're leaving the church. Honestly, what would be more helpful for me as a minister instead of, cause I do, you know, people, people will say as they leave, Hey, great sermon. I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not appreciative. Of that. What would be more helpful if, if, if you came to me and instead of just saying, Hey, that was a great sermon. You told me specifically what you got out of that sermon that was helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, Hey, that right. was a great sermon. When you said, um, you know, do this. Like, I, I think, I think that hits something in me that that I didn't know before or something that you're going to do different this week than you did the week before. Um, like if, if you feel like you have to say something, don't, mm -hmm. you don't have to say something. Like, again, I'm not fishing for compliments. That's how I'd love to just say, Hey, have a great day. That's all, that's mm -hmm. all I'm there for. Uh, but if you feel like you have to say something. Um, so that's just a bit of my heart. Like as a minister, 
um, I want to be concerned, but I don't want to be controlled. I want to, I want to lead. And often it's hard to lead when I'm like, Oh, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? We have, we have how many hundreds of people here? What are they like? It becomes again, exhausting and impossible to do what God really wants us to do when we're being controlled by others. Mm -hmm. And we need to be controlled by God and, and living the identity that he's given us. So I hope that makes sense to you that are listening. I hope uh, you heard something that really uh, clicked with you, maybe something that made a difference in how you uh, understand relationships with others, how God understands you and has loved you since the beginning and desperately wants you to be his. So once again, I want to say thank you to listening to NCC Unplugged and spending some time with us today. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 845 and 1030 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 